How's it going, guys? Are we streaming yet? You noticed I didn't do the countdown today because if you are a regular viewer, you know that we've been fighting with an audio issue and we know what caused it, but we don't know why it's doing what it's doing. And it's actually a glitch in our OBS software, apparently, and I haven't figured it out yet. So if any of you viewing audience are OBS specialist, go back and look at a, a couple of our uh, videos for the last month, the live ones, and uh, see if you've got any advice for us. But as we start to gather up a few folks, how's it going, Rob Wesson? Just trying to make it through another day. Going to do this little bit of a Q&A, and then I'm going to head down to the coast. It's going to be a soggy one, but hey, we'll survive. So as people start to gather, since we're basically just jumping straight into this without a countdown, there was a question that I couldn't answer that I told Boy J that I would research. And I'm a man of my word, so I can follow up on that now. He was asking, what is the torque pounds on the Conrod bearings for an 08 CBR600RR? And this bit of a, uh, a two answer to that question. You actually take it to 15 foot pounds, but you don't stop there. At that point, you add another 90 degrees, and that will be your final torque setting. So the actual total in foot pounds, I don't know. But uh, I know it's going to be more than 15, adding that additional 90 degrees. But uh, that's the way they prefer to do it, is using the angle value versus the, uh, just a torque setting. And I believe they do that because the, uh, the angle is going to be more accurate as far as stretching the bolt to the length it's supposed to be because it, does, it can ignore any friction on the, uh, the connector rod to the bolt surface itself as well as the, the threads as they're you know, being pulled as they pull it in. So the answer is 15 foot pounds plus 90 degrees. And <clears throat> Trevor had also asked me, what is your opinion on the KLR choke cable eliminator? Cheap part, but it does, does it re work really well as well as the OEM chuck, choke lever on the handlebars? Well, from the, the research I did, I would say yes. Uh, basically, it's the same plunger and you're just operating it down at the choke instead of having it go up to a cable. So if anything, uh, I think it would be more accurate and easier to operate. I mean, uh, all the machines uh, I ever rode you know, back in the day, it was usually either a, a, uh, a butterfly choke or just a little plunger straight on the side of the car. Seemed easy enough to get to and certainly is now. I do think you have to modify if there's a plastic cover on the KLR, you'll have to notch out where you can actually reach in there and uh, grab the end of the, uh, the plunger itself. But from what I read, the, the forum is all you know, raved about it and uh, it, you should be good to go if you wanna make the change on your machine. Well, hopefully you're uh, gonna go back and watch this video and, or you may be live now. Well, hopefully that answers your question. And we'll say we've got a few people dropping in. Rob is asking me, uh, 06 GSXR 750, do I need a special tool to remove the engine? No, just a really good back. <laughs> That's what I would suggest, or a couple of friends to where you can uh, get it out without scarring it up too much. I mean, your, your frame's aluminum, so that's not a big worry. Um, but you know, the engine, it, it'll be pretty easy to scratch up. So you may want to tape up some of the areas, especially where it's going to come into contact when you try to wiggle it out. But as far as special tools, no, just regular hand tools should be all you need if memory serves. It's been a little while. Joe is asking me, hello, sir. Most commonly, are intake valves generally loose and the exhaust valves generally tight? Valve clearance check. You're asking me if, if one's a little, if the, the tolerances are different from one side to the other. Yeah, uh, almost um, every single engine I've ever worked on, there's always a uh, difference in between the, uh, the exhaust and the intake. My theory, or I would imagine the prevailing uh, wisdom on that is that your exhaust valves are gonna get hotter, so they, they have to have a, a different tolerance versus the intake. Otherwise, they wouldn't operate as they're supposed to. Brandon's asking me, 2000 model Rancher ES 4x4, 
is the best stuff to clean the carburetor. I used carburetor cleaner, but it had been s sitting for about five years. Carburetor was pretty dirty. Whew, yeah, I would imagine it looked like uh, K-Ro syrup in there. Um, the carburetor cleaner I've, I've had the most luck with is made by Yamalube. I don't think I've got any of it no, where I can get to it quickly, or do I? Nope. But at any rate, you can head over to our website and just do a Yamalube carb cleaner search, and it should come up with it. If not, I'm, I'm betting our guys, our guys can uh, drop a link in the, uh, in the chat as we go along so you can uh, find that, that particular stuff that I like to use. Um, beyond that, if it's, I probably wouldn't even try to clean, uh, clean out those smaller jets. Um, I would either get, especially the idle jet, I'd go ahead and replace it because that, that orifice is so small. Uh, it's, even that Yama Lube stuff is going to have a hard time dealing with it. Um, that or you may just want to look at one of the Moose um, carb kits. I mean, that's going to have all your different O-rings and seals and springs and jets, the whole nine yards, and it's very reasonably priced. So <laughs> it was green, I bet, um, inside the carburetor. Dennis is asking me, 2005 Honda TRX 400, I bought a brand new OEM carb when, when, uh, the, when I turn the wheel to the left, the idle go, goes up. Had Buddy put old carb back on, no problems, I'm lost. <laughs> that is very bizarre. Um, the only way that that can happen is if the cable has not been routed correctly, and I'm guessing that's what happened on when you initially put the uh, the new carb on, and maybe you reversed that that routing when you put the OEM back on, because when you turn the wheel, if it's not um, routed correctly, it's going to pull the, physically pull the entire cable, and it's actually going to come out of the tar top of the carburetor, and you know activate the, uh, the jets on the inside pretty much as if you're turning the throttle itself. So I'd say go back one more time, just take a couple of pictures of all the routing where their cable heads down and make sure you put it in exactly the same route as, the, uh, as what you have right now. All right, Greg is asking me, John, what is your recommendation for increasing the tire rim size on a 2012 Honda Rancher 4x4? I do not want oversized and cause issue with the ATV, thanks. <clears throat> well, interesting question, and as you can well imagine, when you increase your, your rim and hence your tire size, that's gonna do a couple of things. It's gonna, of course, change your, your gear, you know, not your gear ratio, but I guess your gear to ground ratio because your surface area of the, uh, the diameter of the tire has increased. But the other thing it does is it puts more strain on the, the internals of the machine itself as far as your drivetrain. And I was referring to your rear differential, rear and front differential. And if it's a four by four, your, your axle's up front as well. Can the Honda put up with a certain amount of that? Yes, I can, it can. But these people that put these gigantic 32 inch you know, rims and tires, especially on side by sides, it wreaks havoc. On the uh, on the internals, as long as you don't get too carried away, I'm sure it'll be fine. Just to step it up a few sizes, I, I would not go outrageous to make one of those walking tall machines. That's just not my style. But it's up to you if you want to put up with the additional stress and potential damage it's going to do to your drivetrain. But just my opinion. <laughs> Um, now Joe's come back. No, during inspection, do you, in your mechanical history, find intake valves looser and exhaust valves tighter? Okay, I follow you. Um, yeah, I've never really kept up with that, but I think you're probably right. Um, actually, I've, I've, I've seen, especially on the Yamahas, uh, their smaller machines, it was always the intake valves that would end up tightening up as they wore in. But I could see I could, it could go either direction. You know, some machines, even like that uh, CB or, uh, CRF450R, they actually have different valves for the intake and the, uh, and the exhaust as far as their composition. If I remember correctly, it's the, um, it's, it's the exhaust valves that are made out of titanium and the intakes are actually made out of steel. 
Why did they do that? I would assume to con uh, so they could contend with the, the hotter temperatures that the exhaust valves were going to have to be uh, tortured with, for lack of a better term. But I, I guess I've seen it go you know, both directions. But for the most part, yes, one side is a little bit looser, and the other side, you know, sometimes it tightens up because as those valves wear in into the seat, of course, that's going to make the, the stem rise up. That's going to close your gap, and they're going to be too tight. Or that's what I've seen in my, my history at any rate. As, <coughs> Ash Hemp, I think I pronounced that right. Hello, what oil is recommended for an R6 after replacing the bearing? So I need to break in and change the oil out. Most of the time your break in, as far as your oil goes, has mostly to do with the cylinders because um, you're trying to get the rings to seat in there. Now the bearings, I don't think you're going to need, if you just did the bearings and you didn't have to put in new rings, you, know, you should be able to go straight to a semi-synthetic and that's what I would recommend. Now, if you did have to do any um, piston or rings or cylinder work on it, then you want to go with a conventional oil and uh, maybe had an add in an, a hardening additive so everything will start to meld together as it should. But if you're just doing the bearings, I would say go straight to your semi-synthetic and uh, you won't have to worry about using a, a, a standard oil. Brandon says, I already cleaned the jets. Well, good job if you're able to pull that off. Nice. Oscar's asking me, hello, is, is, a good, is it a good idea to replace a regular rectifier to a BMW 1000RR, let's say with, from a Yamaha R1? Connectors are the same, and the idea is to regulate the same. Thanks in advance. Never considered that before. From, a, from an electrical standpoint, there shouldn't be a problem with doing that. Uh, if somebody dis disagrees with me, uh, I'd like to hear their argument on it. So I would say, yes, go ahead. As long as they're, they're set at the same uh, charging voltage or within range, I'd say, why not? Jeff Steves is asking me for a beginner rider. Should we stay with a four-wheeler or side-by-side? -side? Hmm. Well, I, I don't think it would really matter. Just what machine do you want to end up with long term? I mean, if your goal is to you know end up in a side by side, go ahead and start with them now. I mean, why not? I mean, the the, the amount of riding technique is completely different from one machine to another. In, in my opinion, in the side by side, you're basically you know driving a car on a four wheeler. You're having to put a lot of body English into it, and uh, that just doesn't apply with the side by side. Uh, usage. So I'd say whatever you're going to go with long term, start with it in the beginning and keep going. Keith has asked me, hi sir, Honda Foreman 450 oil drain plug is stripped out. Uh, common tale, common tale. If you would, go check out a website. Um, oh, it's not Threadlocker. Time cert. Uh, head over to there, do a quick search on Time Cert and see if they have a, a, a drain plug repair kit. It's basically you drill out the threads and they have a new set of threads that you will get into place and then lock into place. I also would recommend in that particular application using some red Loctite around the outside of the threads, not the inside, the outside, to really get it to sit in there correctly. Because uh, I would imagine you would like to avoid having to pull the engine out and replace your cases. Understandable. Andrew, hello, John. Hello, Andrew. How are you doing today? All right, As Ash Hanf is asking me again, what is the best way to clean an R6 rim? A bike has been standing a long time, and it has mold buildup in the rims. Wow. Start off with a hose and water and maybe some uh, grease lightning or uh, what is that? not purple stuff, but uh, simple simple green, and just get out a, uh, not a wire brush, but use uh, just a nylon brush and go from there. If I remember correctly, the, uh, the R6 rims are black, so you just don't want to uh, actually scratch the paint. So just use a nylon top brush, and that should wipe it away. Certified Tony's asking me, good morning. You must be in a different time zone than I am. 
can connecting an LED bar to the front harness of the original lights ruin the charging system? Question mark. That's kind of a loaded question. I would need to know what the amp draw is on the, the light bar that you're wanting to run. For the most part, LEDs are very low um, amperage draw, so you can do this carefully. I've always kind of steered away from it. I, I know that the engineers that come up with these machines, they design them to work as designed, and they really don't put in the afterthought, so what, what is everybody going to add to these things? So I, I would recommend using the light switch as a trigger source to uh, do a, an external relay that would then power your LED lights. So I would say stay away from it. Uh, um, just running the lights directly off of the existing wiring, uh, you could potentially be asking for some, some trouble. But to answer your question fully, I would need to know the year, make, and model, and then the, uh, the lights as well. But um, it just as a uh, middle of the road answer, no, don't do it. Add in a, uh, a separating rate, uh, relay to where it doesn't put an extra task onto the, uh, the, the wiring system and the charging system. As far as, oh, as far as the charging system goes, mm, that they give you enough room on most machines to uh, run additional accessories. So I don't think the charging system is going to be affected. Dennis is asking me, thanks, uh, John Talley. Me and a buddy ran the cable the same way and didn't get it. Ghost in my machine, <laughs> laugh out loud. Well, did y'all put it back together? I mean, and then that uh, the carburetor issue went away. Uh, Brandon has also asked me, I brought it from the original owner. The four-wheeler hasn't ever been in the mud or in the woods. So I was looking for some stock tires for it. Gotcha. Well, I'm sure that we carry those as well, and if they're a little too pricey for you, if you're look, working on a budget, you may want to search out the same diameter and width and uh, offset uh, with the ITP brand. They're, they're usually quite competitive with their pricing. All right, Kyle's asking me, what damage can hydrolock cause? Whew. The biggest one is when that piston comes up and tries to compress water instead of a fuel-air mixture. It actually compresses the piston down onto the rings so hard you can't take the rings off. And then your compression goes in the toilet and then she no longer runs. And that's what I've seen time and time again um, when some of our machines have been brought in uh, trying to act like U-boats instead of ATVs. Yes, um, even more than that, I've seen them bend connecting rods and or break connecting rods. Uh, I, had that, I, I saw that happen on a, uh, um, a jet ski or it's actually a, a wave runner. And it, it ingested water and he, uh, he was running at speed when it happened. And it, out the side of the block, it made, made one heck of a mess. Super is asking me, how many miles does a UTV last? For example, a car goes around 250,000 miles. Well, that's kind of like the, uh, the old adage, uh, how many licks to get to the center of a Tootsie Roll pop? The world may never know. Um, case in point, we have a black Mule FXT Pro that runs in between two of our buildings uh, where our distribution center is. And <laughs> I'm actually doing a little bit of work on it. And um, I glanced down at the uh, odometer, and she was at... 24,000 miles, still running like a champ. And all she does is just run back and forth in between the buildings all day long, every day, six days a week. So how many miles are we going to get out of it? I don't know. Um, but to answer your question, I think just about any UTV out there can easily do 15 to 20,000 miles as long as they're maintained properly. I mean, uh, I have to admit, with our machine, we We've, we really work it hard. Uh, I'll have to post some footage of it uh, in action. Uh, we ask a lot out of it, but, and that takes a toll on its bearings and its drivetrain and the axles and the transmission and everything else because we're actually overworking it. But in normal usage, uh, it shouldn't have a problem doing 20, 30, 40,000 miles would be uh, my estimate. And uh, let me silence 
these notifications because I figure y'all don't need to know about our, uh, our Spanish releases for today. All right, back to it. Juan is asking me, hey, here we go. Buenas tardes, saludos de Argentina. Good afternoon to you as well and from the USA. Jasmine is asking me, hey, John, do you recommend putting spacers um, on a Razor 570 Polaris for the back wheels only? Uh, Jasmine, what are you trying to accomplish by widening the stance on it? And I'm just curious as to why, why would you want to do that? Oscar is asking me, what causes stators to burn? Is it temperature, bad regulator, regulator rectifier, or something else? Well, like anything man-made, uh, things wear out after a time, you know, after a certain amount of time. Um, typically, stators burn out prematurely when they're getting overloaded or they're being, you know, they're asked, they're being asked to develop more current than they're capable of, and they will overheat, start to break down, and either cause a short or an open in one or more of the uh, the coils on the inside. But uh, I've seen bad regulators um, or rectifiers actually damage the stators as well because they had a fault inside and it was you know, trying to drive uh, its uh, current and voltage into a brick wall for the most part. All right, Juan is asking me, if, oh, you're asking me something in Spanish. And, I barely passed Spanish back in high school, and that was in like 1984. So, guys, if you would translate Juan's uh, his question on his uh, YZ426F 2000 model, and I'll see if I can answer it. Jose is asking me any, any recommendations for maintenance on a Honda TRX 400EX. Well, Honda has their maintenance schedule in the owner's manual, but uh, my rule of thumb is, and I've probably over maintain my machines, but they're in really good shape, is after a really hard weekend at like Durham Town or something like that, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and change the oil and of course go after the oil filter. And that's really all you have to do with these machines is keep the oil changed, the air filter clean, and on that particular model, keep your chain at the, uh, the correct you know, tension or uh, adjustment and you're good to go. And it, it'll let you know anything else that's coming up. I, when you do just a, a, a pre-ride cursory mess it, or look over at your brakes and see if your pads are getting too low. I mean, if they're down to the uh, thickness of a credit card, you need to get rid of them. But as far as the maintenance, basically every five to six hours sometimes, if I'm really riding hard you know, for a weekend, two days in a row, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and change the oil. Oil's cheap. Rebuilding an engine is very expensive. Plus, these machines, especially like yours, what does it hold? Two quarts? I mean, that's not much of anything. So, over maintain them, in, in my opinion. Rashib is asking me, sir, I have one question. This Yamaha RX 100 is a super bike and super engine. Tell me. I'm not familiar with the Yamaha RX 100. So, I'll have to. That may be a machine that's not available here in the States. I know that several manufacturers, is, uh, they make um, certain area-specific machines that don't necessarily uh, make it over here to the, uh, the States. All right. All right, they did translate that uh, question for Juan. Um, a question I have, a YZ426F Model 2000 Yamaha, can another piston of the wife's Z450 Yamaha be used? I, I don't think that's, that's going to be possible. One, of course, it's a different bore, and you really can't bore your cylinder to match this because your cylinder should, if I memory serve, have a nicosyl coating on the uh, cylinder walls, and that is really hard to replicate. <laughs> I know of a couple of places that actually uh, they offer boring. I think we did that to our um, Yamaha R6 build where we punched it out to a 636. But I had to send the cylinders off and uh, with the pistons where they could size them, bore them, and then replate the uh, the cylinders. So it was a pretty involved process. 
and I'm not sure that your 426 has enough room for the 450 to get in there as far as the uh, as far as the uh, the diameter. It could, but I don't know off the top of my head. I've never I've never done a uh, a modification on a 426. I don't think they made that model, but for a couple of years before they did go to the the uh, the 450. All right, Matt is asking me, how do I know if I adjusted the valve the the values correctly, the valves correctly? Well, depending on which machine, well, any machine, you're going to end up going back and verifying the uh, the, the clearance for the set of feeler gauges. I mean, that's what you're adjusting them to. And if you don't have a set, you know, just don't do it by the seat of your pants. There's no way my eye is sharp enough to, to see, you know, eight thousandths clearance. Nope. I doubt it. Ash Hanth has also asked me, do I need to clean the injectors on a R6 bike that's been standing for three years? The tank uh, had some light rust in it as well. So I'll so I have to get to Redline. Um, is there a way to clean the injectors? Thanks. Yes, there is. And Motion Pro actually makes a little some block device. And you actually use just regular carb cleaning fluid. And it allows you to hold the injector still, activate the injector, and then spray through it. Um, I think we did a couple of videos that showed uh, that particular Motion Pro product in action. So guys, if you would drop that in the in the uh, <laughs> drop that in the uh, the chat, and um, maybe that'll help help him out. All right. 155 is asking me, hey, John, is there any way to put a foot shift on a 07 Honda Rancher uh, 4x4 e-shift? Mine's hard to shift in the reverse, first, second, and, and from neutral. I doubt it, <laughs> because I'm pretty sure the engine cases are different in between those two models. Um, but I will, I will take a peek and see if that, that's even possible. But... Uh, off the top of my head, I would say probably not. <laughs> I like MC's comment. Matt, I have a big bore kit. Makes a, it makes a good ashtray. <laughs> Jasmine's asking me, just for a meaner look uh, of the back of the uh, UTV, I don't want to put strain on anything. Uh, my thoughts on it. Uh, just a meaner look. If that's the way you want your machine to look, then go for it. It is going to change the, uh, the handling characteristics, having a bit of a, a wide body uh, look going on in the back. But if it makes you happy, go ahead. I wouldn't get too carried away because it will put a little bit more stress on the axles or, or the axle because, you know, physics. The wheel's going to be further out. That, that puts more torque against the uh, you know, your base point of the axle. You are welcome. I think I answered the 450 question, fitting in a 426. Um, I can go back and verify the bore size, but I, I think they actually have a different bore size, so I would say no. And, and even if they didn't, I, I don't know what the the uh, the height of the wrist pin is in uh, correlation to the top of the piston. That could be different as well. BA does ask me, greetings from Portugal. My 05 Suzuki SV1000N keeps destroying the flywheel. Magnets coming loose. Ooh. I, I don't want to buy another one. They cost around three hundred dollars. Can you glue these magnet magnets in? JB Weld. I'd be afraid of that. Um, I'm curious as to why they keep coming loose. I'm not familiar with uh, this being a common problem on the uh, on the SV. I mean, do you or what type of load do you have on the electrical system? That would be my question back to you. Duran's asking me, I have issues bleeding my Suzuki K7 hydraulic clutch system. Please help. If you're really having that much trouble getting it to draw the fluid in, you may want to look at using a vacuum type um, bleeding system. I believe in them. Uh, that makes life a whole lot easier than sitting there having to pump levers or brakes or whatever. It, you'll end up finding places to use this on your, on your cars if you do your own maintenance. That way you, you're not constantly bothering your wife and or girlfriend or boyfriend, um, having to get them in there and wear their legs out. Uh, 
Mine was tired of helping me um, a week or so ago. Sorry about that, Gail. <laughs> All right. Good grief. Do we really just blast through 30 minutes? <laughs> I guess we did. All right, guys. Looks like I almost caught up with you. Um, it looks like I've got four questions. So, if guys, if you would make notes of those last four questions, and I will lead off with those this coming up, or not this coming Friday, next Friday, when we'll do another live session at our regular time, 3 o'clock. Until then, everybody have a great 4th of July weekend. Be safe out there, and hopefully we will see you again this next Friday at 3 o'clock. Thank you for spending some time with us. God bless, and have a good day.